evening, I'm Mary Garofalo, and welcome to another edition of 16 by 9, The Bigger Picture. Haley Cole seemingly had it all. She was young, beautiful, and on the fast track to fame. So why would she take her own life? Or did she? Was it suicide, homicide, or just a tragic accident? Tonight, 16 by 9 takes you from the flatlands of Manitoba to the runways of Milan to investigate the mysterious death of Haley Cole. Canadian cover girl Haley Cole had finally made it. She catapulted from the pages of Glamour magazines to the glitz of music videos. But there is something quite haunting about this particular music video because this would be an eerie premonition to the tragic way Haley Cole would die. In this Turkish pop music video, Haley is acting the role of a distraught lover, ready to jump to her death from a balcony. But at the end of this video, she is saved from killing herself. If only that had been true in real life. It's just hard to see her in video. You know, and especially looking so sad. <laughs> These are the difficult images Haley's family cannot bear to watch. They are a torturous reminder of how this gorgeous international model died. I don't know, it's just hard. Yeah, Haley didn't like pain. <laughs> what the Cole family thinks about day in and day out is their real life tragedy. Haley Cole fell to her death from this seventh floor balcony in Milan, Italy, making her the third Canadian model to die under mysterious circumstances abroad. But was it suicide or something more sinister? There's no answers. There's no answers. Answers 16 by 9 traveled across Canada and Europe in search of. It all began here on the sleepy streets of Beausajour, Manitoba, just about an hour outside Winnipeg. That's where we met Haley's father, Clifford, and the sister she was the closest to, Bridget. Haley was a success story, a small town Canadian girl who made it big. And it all started when Haley won a modeling contest in a nearby mall. She didn't tell anyone until she won, and then she told everyone. She was 20 years old when she began her modeling career, considered old for the modeling world. But there was something very special about Haley's look, and just about everyone wanted her. I think there was 26 agencies there, and 23 of them wanted Haley. She traveled the world, gracing the covers of fashion magazines in Toronto, New York, Istanbul, Athens, and London. But according to her sister Bridget, Haley learned very quickly about the reality of her work and the brutal criticism she faced every single day. Haley said, like, modeling is lifestyle, it's not a job. But according to Bridget, Haley was fighting her own demons. She suffered from depression and was on antidepressants. She would get sad sometimes, cry, you know. And were you ever concerned about it? Well, I didn't really know she had was on that stuff. Right. Yeah. But her medication helped control her moods, and Haley continued to work. Recently, she left for London, England, and Bridget said in that city, Haley's age and body type worked against her. But Haley hated working in London, so she decided to come here to Milan, the fashion capital of Italy. Haley signed a contract with a Milan agency called Future Models. And she lived here at an apartment owned by the agency on the seventh floor of this apartment building. She lived with four other Russian and Ukrainian teenage models, and Haley was the veteran. She's going to be a supermodel. That was her goal. She's going to make a lot of money. But was the Canadian cover girl really happy, or was there something disturbing going on inside of her? On the night of October 11th, at 11 o'clock in the evening, Haley fell from the seventh floor. Her roommates told police that Haley said she had received an upsetting phone call telling her that her favorite sister Bridget had died. And then she simply jumped to her death. For sure, um, this is a case of suicide. Captain Victorio Stingo is the lead police investigator in Milan. She was saying something like that. My, did, my sister doesn't exist anymore, so uh, I, don't have a, uh, I don't want to exist anymore. Police say no suicide note was found, and phone records indicate that Haley did not receive any calls that day. They also revealed Haley's autopsy report exclusively to 16 by 9. We found uh, in her blood uh, marijuana and also um, tranquilizer. 
Haley was still alive when she was taken to the hospital. And according to Italian Carabinieri, while she was struggling for her life, representatives from the modeling agency came in and began vacating the apartment. By the very next day, the girls and all the furniture were gone. Even the doorman of this building told us the agency had been renting this apartment for five years, and the model's quick exit was even strange to him. The next, that night, they packed their bags, they went away? The same night. Not only did they exit the apartment, but 16 by 9 learned that three out of the four models were flown back home to Russia soon after Haley's death. All of this is information the family knew nothing about. Did you know that Haley was alive, still no. alive on the ground? No. When... I'm sorry, Bridget. I'm sorry. Haley's family has repeatedly asked the modeling agency if they could speak to the women that were there that night, but the agency refused to even give them their names. The family says they've received few answers, and that has made them angry. They don't believe Haley committed suicide. Why wouldn't she have phoned home, you know? And if she was so hysteric that I was dying, it doesn't make any sense because she sent me an email in the afternoon. The agency Future Models refused our repeated requests for an interview, so while in Milan, we decided to pay them a visit. The agency head, Paolo Tome, came out to speak with us. Well, there's a lot of questions, with all due respect, there's a lot of questions that need to be answered that aren't answered here. Because the phone call she received, who, who was it? Who called her? No, I don't know. We have no idea. We have no idea. So somebody would call her and say, your sister's dying, and then she says, I'm going to jump out the window? We also wanted to know why the models were sent home so quickly and never allowed to speak to the family. I don't think it was fair to keep these girls. They, we, we prefer to send, one is back yesterday, we prefer to send the girl back home. Because for, one was the first day here, first time out of, of, of uh, Ukraine, who we'll come to Milano, and the girls up the windows at night. If they would have been helping us more from the beginning, you know, with, you know, with the girls' names, with, you know, um, who had been in contact with Haley that day, anything, you know, but there was nothing. And I think that's why there's, there's so much animosity towards them. And if that isn't upsetting enough, all of Haley's modeling earnings are tied up in red tape in Italy, and her family could not afford to bring her body back for her memorial. Haley was cremated in Milan. I miss everything. Everything I see reminds me of her, you know? I ask Haley every second I'm alone, like, just, just tell me what happened. Because I don't know, you know?